Well, that was pretty convicting. <laughs> um, so I have a couple sh- uh, stories to share with you guys. And um, I'm going to start off with a testimony of how we can impact those that are so integrated into the material uh, just possessions of life and how we, we take the world's mask and we start to refine it ourselves and to put it on and wear it to receive the approval of man. So I'm going to talk about my own journey as well on how the Lord set me free from the addiction of affirmation of man after, uh, after coming into Christ. But I'm going to start off with, um, I have a real stirring in my heart during worship, and I was crying because I'm not supposed to be right here. Like, I'm not. Statistically, I'm not. And so... I, during worship, sorry, I'm changing gears. During worship, I just felt Holy Spirit come and give me a hug and hold me because I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not supposed to tell you about the glory of God and his freedom and his love. I'm not supposed to, but I am because of the mercy and grace that God had on my life. But I'm going to get into that later. <laughs> okay. So, um, last time I was up here sharing my testimony, I had dreadlocks. Some of you guys remember. Some of you liked it. Others didn't. But it's all good. (laughs) But it's all good. Um, So, I actually felt from the Lord to grow dreadlocks. Now, the Lord can use anything, guys. If you have a talent, if you are good at video games, cards, whatever you have, the Lord will use that to evangelize the people in the world because we need to be relational. We can't be so spiritual and unrelational, unrelational that we can't communicate or share what we have with others in front of us. So I learned how to do dread maintenance. So every time I see someone with dreadlocks, I'm like, oh, bro, those are so cool. I used to have them, show them pictures, say, hey, I can you know, do your dreads for free if you'd want. It's all strategic because I need them to sit down for two hours with me and Holy Spirit in a room. <laughs> and we'll watch what happens. So this is basically what happened. I was at Mongolian Barbecue, and my brother Emmanuel looked over and he's like, oh man, that dude's dreads are sweet. And I look over and I see, I see this guy, big guy, buff, short dreads, they're braided, they look pretty cool, tattoos all over his face, all over his arms, you know, and um, I'm like, oh, this is the Lord, this is going to be sweet. And so I'm slowly making my bowl, you know what I mean? I'm slow, just waiting, waiting for him to close in. And so I say something, he's like, thanks, man. And I was like, yeah, I used to have dreads, so that started the conversation. Um, and I was like, who's, who's doing them? Like, are you, are you using wax, this and that? I'm speaking code, don't worry about it, you don't have to follow me. Um, and he's like, no, I want to do it this way. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. And he's like, really? Why'd you cut your dreads? And I was like, um, well, I met this girl. <laughs> And I was debating, should I cut my dreads or not, Lord? And then someone had a dream, it confirmed, so I cut my dreads. The Lord was strategic, because this was before I met her father. And (laughs) the Lord is the best wingman you can ever have in your life. I'm just saying, don't try to seek and find. The Bible says don't find. You just stay stay on the path. He will hook you up, I'm telling you. And she's now my fiance, so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I tell him a little bit of that, but I felt my spirit. I'm going to see him again, so I'm going to withhold. So he went to go hang out uh, with his girlfriend, I'm assuming, and um, I went, you know, with my family. A week later, uh, we're in contact, and I go to his house. I think it's his house. I find out he's a rapper, and he has a large fan base, right? And uh, so I'm like, oh, this is, this is perfect. This is so good. And uh, we go into his house. Turns out it's not his house. It's actually his sugar mama's house. If you don't know what a sugar mama is, it's an older lady that takes care of younger guys and pays for everything. That's where he's living. So he has his own studio, everything. There's weed. There's just blunts. There's, there, there's just everything in this room. And I'm excited because I get to walk into his territory. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, like, like Jesus was never influenced by the surroundings that he was in. The reason why he left, because he said that there was unbelief there, I truly believe, because no one was going to let him pray for. 
You know, like no one was going to allow him to pray for them because they knew him. They're like, no, we're good. So I walk into this place, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good. He's showing me some music. We're talking. Now this guy has fully committed to being a rapper and to looking like one to where he has tattoos on his face. He is editing and adding on to the mask that he's creating for the world so that they look at him a certain way, and that's where he's getting his identity from, right? Two hours with this guy, and he confesses. I didn't even do it. This is Holy Spirit. He confesses, and he says, all I'm doing is marketing an image because I don't really think that this is who, and he stops, and I said, I'm, you know, doing his hair. I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 bro, keep going. That's a, fi- that's, that's good. That's a good thought. Keep going. He was gonna say, I don't really think this is who I am, but he stopped himself because he's committed. They're right all over his face. He's committed, but just two hours with Holy Spirit, he almost removed the mask. Right? Felt the Lord, you know. Do his hair for free. I got to pray for him outside. Um, he was happy with the hair. And I, I was like, bro, let me pray for you. He comes from a background of uh, uh, Wiccans, uh, Freemason stuff, all that stuff. Um, and he was just like, okay. Prayed for him. And he kind of took a step back. And he just started laughing. And he's like, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And he walks in. Well, he then texts me later. And he just says, pray for me. You know? So his mask almost came off, and I know where he's at because that's where I was before I met Christ. When Christ met me, I had refined this image that I wore in the world. I was known for two things, smoking a lot of weed and partying, and don't fight him. So violence was my, like I used, these were my fighting hands. Now I put them on the sick, and Holy Spirit heals them. There's always a redeeming factor to everything. Now I can walk into a party and I'm I'm mission-based. I don't need to drink with you so that we can connect. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to love you. I'm not going to compromise in front of you because the world doesn't need Christians that are compromising. The world needs Christians who don't look like them. That's why we're here. Sorry. You know what I mean? Holy Spirit's going. Holy Spirit's going. Holy Spirit's going. So anyways... Going to my story, my masks, I, I put them on, I put them on, and, 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 and I stitched them on. I, that was me when I was in front of you. When I wasn't, I took them off. And that's all, that, you know, that's, that's been all of us at one point. And so this man, this man of God at a park one day came up to me because he was able to see past the mask. He was able to see my value through that thing that I, you know, I was wearing like a tank top, smoking weed, hanging out by myself, nice car, but he still came and he said, hey, do you know about God? I believe he's real. And he sat with me for an hour and a half. At the end of that, I met Jesus. The physical presence of God came over me and now I was convicted Am I going to leave everything to follow Christ, all my materialism, everything to follow Christ? Or am I going to keep that and turn away from Christ? It was so real to me. This this armor that Christ wanted to give me, this, this identity that he wanted to give me was so real to me, I couldn't deny his glory. I saw his face, and there was no mask. And I said, I want that. And he clothed me with something new, and I wear it every single day. So I come from gangs, drugs, fighting, addicted to sex, addicted to affirmation, everything, everything you could think of, that was me. But Christ came to me, and he showed me my value and who I was, and I couldn't deny to jump in all the way. Now, so I got saved, baptized, on this journey with God, Devil's trying to throw, throw things at me. And, you know, 
The grace of the Lord is so good. If you just keep seeking him, he will set you free. Keep seeking him, and he will set you free. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. That it doesn't have to be a five-year-long journey. You just press in, and you yield to the potter and allow him to shape you and mold you, and you will be free. Trust me, I'm four years in the Lord, completely free. I can walk into any situation and not even be tempted by the things around me just because Holy Spirit is so good, and that's all I want. And that, that's all I want for you guys, and that's all I want for the people in the world. He's real. And all the other facade and everything, that's all fake. But one thing that I did struggle with, and just recently, about eight months ago, I, I, I could confidently say that I've been set free from, was the affirmation of man over the voice of God. And Brandon talked about getting real before the Lord. Him saying, God, I, I feel like I'm going to quit. And then God shouts <laughs> from a megaphone. Mine was, I respected this man of God, 65-year-old man in the Lord, and I really wanted to tell him all the good stuff God was doing, going to do through me that were from prophecies and from other people. And really what I was trying to do is seek his affirmation for him to say, good job, Alex. Good job. Keep going. Compliments can either destroy you Or they can build you if it's unhealthy or healthy. I was looking for the unhealthy compliment. But thank God (laughs) that he has a relationship with the Lord and he's able to see past that. And he shot right at my heart and he said, you're addicted to the affirmation of man. Because the voice of the Lord is not good enough for you. And it hit me. But it was true. I I couldn't respond. I was just like stuck. I was like... Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if you ever got a word like that. Like, that's pretty, it's, it, it's good. It's, it's healthy. It's healthy. Christ loves us very maturely. You know, it's not, it's not an immature love. And so, in order to get free from this thing, I had to stand before the Lord by myself when no one was looking on a walk and say, God, I would benefit more if... Brandon or somebody would come up to me and affirm my identity in you than you doing it to me, and that's not okay. And unfortunately, I think that's a lot of us within the church, is we would rather someone look at us and say, you're doing good, you're doing amazing, God loves you, and we would just (gasps) feed off of it. But it's actually worse, because that's going to cause you to be an altar junkie Or that's going to cause you, which is true, I need to feel God in order to be loved. And that's not true. You're loved. Period. And that's something that I had to learn. That I'm loved. Period. Whether if I feel God or not. You know, this morning I was praying and I was like, God, what do you want to do for the day? And, And I'm listening for his voice. And, you know, we always expect like, you're called to the nation. You know, we always expect that. But it was just a, I love you. And that's it. I love you, and I'm looking for something else, but he's just, I love you, you know, and so I had to be vulnerable, transparent, and honest before the Lord by myself, and, 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 and that could look different for some of us, but I feel like God is pulling on some strings right now, and a lot of people in the room, and that could even be as deep as God, to be honest, I don't really believe in you, I don't really believe that you're real. It could be, God, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking you for what I can get. And there's mercy, and there's love, and there's grace. But if I can encourage you, it's that we need to remove the mask of religion from our face. And the Lord's not impressed with your prayers when he can see that you're just doing it for the sake of religion. He sees it all. He sees it all, and it's an honor for me to be able to share this with you because Christ is love, and he will hold you, and he will set you free, and he is worth the wait, and he is worth running afterwards. You run as fast as grace grace is allowing you to run. You run as fast as that is going, and you don't stop. Can I have you guys stand? So 
So everyone just bow your heads, close your eyes, get intimate with the Lord. It's just you and the Lord right now. Don't worry about the person next to you. It's just you and the Lord right now. I talked about me being addicted to affirmation. Even as I stand before you right now in front of all these, all of you guys, I have to be responsible that I'm not doing this for you just hearing me, that I'm not doing this for you to see me. I have to be a good steward of, of my heart. And us as the body of Christ, we have to be good stewards of our heart. And so right now, I just, I just get a picture of a child walking up to their father or their mother, their parent, with a bag over their head or a mask on their face. And that's a picture of us walking to our father with a bag over our head, trying to do house life, trying to do our normal child things. But clearly there's something that needs to be removed. And so if you're, if you're feeling... If you're feeling that thing, whatever it may be, you know, just get real. Like I said, there's mercy, there's love, there's grace. He already sees it, and he's going to rip it from you as soon as you confess. He is faithful and just to forgive you. So I got a few words right now. So just be with the Lord, and if this resonates with you. Someone in the room is harboring frustration and anger towards the church for not being seen, for not being appreciated and patted on the back. And the Lord says that he sees you. And you don't need anybody else from the church to say you're doing good. You need the Father's voice. Overall, you need the Father's voice. Others in the room are feeling left out from a friend group or a community gathering. They feel abandoned. And the Lord says again, if you feel alone because you're not with people, that means you haven't been with me. Because he's there in the secret place. And he sees you. Others are performing so that they can be seen by their peers and held at a higher esteem. Whether that's through the gift that God has given you through your work identity of what you do so that your friends and your families can look at you and hold you on this pedestal. Just be real right now. Search your heart. Search your heart with the Lord. And the Lord says that your identity is not in your job and in your money or what you do or if you work at a coffee shop or if you're a police officer or your identity will always be found in him. So Holy Spirit, I thank you for every eye that is set on you. Father, that you would come right now in your gentleness and your grace and you would start to break the chains, break the false lies. Father, that people would be set free right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your identity. We thank you that we don't need the affirmation of man to come and satisfy this this, this gaping hole that we have. It doesn't matter if our earthly fathers or mothers didn't hug us or if they didn't tell us that they loved us. We know that there's a father in heaven who loves us. And that's why you say, "Call, call no man on earth your father. It's because we have a father who's in heaven who always loves us, who will always affirm us, who will always grow us and who will always be with us through anything thank you for that love father thank you for that love come holy spirit right now thank you for loving us so well we give you all these things we we're removing the masks right now in jesus name